guys, welcome back to another video on the Inside Spurs channel. Happy Tuesday morning, afternoon, depending on when it is I actually do release this. I hope you're well. hope the day is going to treat you well. Whatever it is that you're up to, I hope the day is going to treat you well. I'm actually recording this on the Monday, hence why the t-shirt's still the same as the last video or the last news video I've done. Um, so don't shoot me, all right? Uh, this video, we're talking about the loan roundup as well. We've got some, um, got some obviously playoff implications uh some good and bad in that regard uh we've got some players that are playing more minutes than they have recently as well as players that just aren't playing still so kind of the similar similar regard to that as well as a bit of a really intriguing report around one of our players potentially jumping up a couple of leagues for another move that's right plenty to get into plenty to talk about just to say though if you do Give us a subscribe. You're very much welcome to join us for the journey. And what I'm going to do is just quickly start with the players that haven't played uh, or are about to play. So to give you an idea, Jed Spence, uh, Genoa, they play tonight. So tonight being Monday, obviously. Uh, you'll see us next day. So you'll know how Genoa got on. Uh, Troy Parrott still suspended after the red card for Excelsior Rotterdam. Uh, Indombele was an unused sub in a 3-0 away win uh, away to Ad Adana Demispor, by the way. Balotelli plays up front for them. So a little bit of ball knowledge for you there. Um, and Alejo Valise uh, didn't play again, but he was on the bench in a one-all draw on Sunday against Betis. So quick little, quick round up on those ones. Won't spend long. You know, you, you know my thoughts and views about some of those players, you know. But let me start with, uh, let me start with actually the game that had the most of our players playing in. It was Millwall. At home to Plymouth, Mill were winning 1-0 in that game. So, good outing for Jaffet Tanganga's side, obviously keeping a clean sheet and getting the win. Uh, to give you an update on the other two, uh, Alfie Devine played a handful of minutes. He was brought on in the 87th minute. Uh, Ashley Phillips did start the game, but was substituted in the 81st minute. And then Millwall scored about two minutes later after that. So, Ashley Phillips had a clean sheet, which is nice, you know. Um... Plymouth just don't play any good football though. That's their issue at the moment. Like you know, when you when you see their fans, they're just they they're praying the season get, is ending. They're praying that it's done, you know, and they're praying it's done and they're still in the championship because uh, they've hated the last few months to be honest. Um, so yeah, I mean they had less possession than Millwall, which for a team like Millwall who don't dominate possession ever. Saying something. I mean, Millwall right now is sitting 16th in the championship. They are currently nine points clear of of Birmingham, who are in the bottom three. So, safe for next season. Congratulations to Millwall, obviously. Uh, they were safe, I think, after last week, to be honest. But, yeah, still, congratulations, nevertheless. Um, obviously, I expect Jaffa Tukenga to get a much better move next season. For Plymouth, though, Goes to the last game of the season. They're one point clear of Birmingham, who are obviously in the relegation zone. And they're three points clear of Huddersfield, who are in the relegation zone. But Huddersfield need a 15-goal swing. So Huddersfield are pretty much dead and buried. Uh, Birmingham's goal difference is four worse than Plymouth. So that could easily be swung around, you know. Birmingham winning 2-0. Plymouth losing 2-0. You know, so yeah, very nervous, very nerving times down on the West Country. Um, moving into Mr. Joe Roden at Leeds. This was probably the worst outing of the season. It was a 4-0 loss away to QPR. QPR, by the way, are 17th in the league. Um, yeah, awful, awful performance. Uh, the fact that they're sitting there in second right now in the league, because they lost, it meant that Leicester City are guaranteed uh, promotion now because uh, Leeds have only got one more game left to play. Leicester are four points clear of, of Leeds and Ipswich, but Ipswich have played the same amount of games as Leicester. So Ipswich can still win the title. Uh, but Leeds, the best they can do is now hope that Ipswich at least lose their next game or keep the points low because sitting at level on points with uh, Ipswich with a goal difference of seven better, they're still in the right position. They're technically like one, po they're like one point clear now, but they're going to need to, they need to step up for the, next, uh, for the last game of the season because a 4-0 loss is a big loss. And if, if Ipswich win big in their next game by three or four, just makes this ordeal very bad for him. So uh yeah. Pretty horrific. Pretty horrific for 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 them. Moving to Brentford, uh losing 1-0 away to Everton for the 5:30 kickoff on Saturday. I actually didn't watch this game, which I'm glad cuz it did look very good. No offense. Um Sergio Reglon played in that game. He was booked. 
I did have it when he was booked, so apologies, I have lost it. Uh, he was booked uh, and then was substituted about, let me do my maths here. Uh, I think he was substituted, where is it? Yeah, 17 minutes after they lost the lead. Oh, well, the, well scored, they scored. Um, apparently, regular looked good. Apparently, looked bright. Uh, but, you know, down 1 0, 15 minutes to go. You know, you, you, you're going for the, you're going to get the, into the game. You're going to get, you know, points, things like that. They should have kept him on. He's been getting assists recently. But, you know, I mean, looking at it, there was five shots on target between the two teams. Everton had just 18 shots to one shot on target. I mean, Everton are now above Brentford. Uh, they're on 36 points. Everton are now obviously safe uh, ahead of relegation. I mean, technically, technically they're not, but you know what I mean. I mean, you're you're 11 points clear of Luton. You're uh, 12 points clear of Burnley, and both teams need massive goal points, uh, goal point swings, and things like that. So. Both teams will be safe, Brentford and Everton. Uh, it, it really now is between Burnley, Luton and Forest. Who goes down? There's obviously two points between them. Um, goal difference obviously on Forest's side, being nine better than uh, Luton and then 12 better than Burnley. So, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty intense going into the, the end of the season. Uh, Barnet, this was a, this was one of the bad ones for the playoffs. Uh, losing 4-0 at home to Solihull Moors in the National League semi-final. Josh Kinney obviously played. Rough. That is rough. Uh, I mean, they finished ahead of Solihull Moors by 10 points. Uh, they had, they'd had scored 20 goals more this season than Solihull Moors. They conceded two less. So the goal difference better than Solihull Moors of 22. And then, yeah, losing 4-0. That is, that is pretty brutal. I won't lie. I don't think it was expected either, so... Yeah, that is uh, ooh, that is rough. That is rough for Josh Keeley. But overall, a good season for Josh. Like, you know, he should get a better move next year towards a, a better League One side, to be honest. So we'll, we'll, we'll wait and see. And I want to finish on Matthew Craig at Doncaster Rovers. And the reason, because I'm bringing in the story of a transfer potentially for next season. So Doncaster, at the end of February, we're basically tipped to go down. We are now sitting on the, what is it, the 29th of April, and they're in the playoffs. That is an incredible story by Doncaster. They just basically won, it was like 10 wins in a row or something. They just beat everyone as much as they possibly could, because goal difference-wise, they obviously needed to bring that up. Their goal difference was only plus five for a team finishing in the playoffs, which, you know, crews are the same. They were fairly the same. Evidently, the top three were like that much better than everyone else uh yeah uh, anyway but look they're in the playoffs i believe they uh in the playoffs i believe they played crew alexander so obviously in the playoffs for for the the league team so league two one and above obviously they have a two-legged system home and away and then obviously the winners go into the playoff final which is normally done at wembley um, the fact that Doncaster are in it is nothing short of a near miracle. The fact that Matthew Craig's played a massive part in this is is brilliant. So they drew two away to Gillingham, by the way, to give you an idea of how they got on the last game of the season. They drew two all, uh, which they finished one point ahead of seventh. So you can see fifth to uh, fifth to ninth were separated by two points. That's ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. And this is why the football leagues are so goddamn cool. I love them. And let's talk about Matthew Craig and the move. So it came from Peter O'Rourke through Football Insider who said that Matthew Craig is wanted by a number of clubs, including Millwall, who obviously spoke about earlier, and Sheffield Wednesday for next season following his impressive form on loan at Doncaster Rovers. And this is why loan moves work. This is why we love them. You're in League Two. You're a massive part as to why the team that you are playing for is doing so well. And the fact they want to move you up, well, I say you want to move up, but people want to bring you up into their league, two leagues above where you are. I mean, Millwall, obviously, like I said, I've, I've said what Millwall finished. They, they finished as 16th. Sheffield Wednesday are 20th. And technically not guaranteed. I mean, if they lost at Birmingham and Plymouth, both won. Uh, 
Sheffield Wednesday get relegated because they've got a really bad goal difference. It's, it's on minus 26 compared to minus 12 for Plymouth and minus 16 for Birmingham. So, you know, that's, that's not it's not guaranteed. But the fact that, you know, a 16th and a 20th side in the championship ahead of you being the fifth side in League Two, that's massive. It's absolutely massive, and I'd love that. I would love if he ends up going to a Millwall or or a, or well, if Sheffield as they stay in, in the um, in the championship. I'd love that personally, because that is what we want from loan deals. We want them to improve. We want to move up the leagues. We want to do better. This is where they work. Just you know, indoor ballet and the Lees and so on just don't work enough, you know. So, but yeah, a little bit of good news there. I thought I'd just bring that in. Obviously, low round up and all that jazz, and obviously good to see about Matthew Craig potentially getting moved next season, and you know. There's plenty still to play for in these low roundups. I obviously won't be doing many more of these, which is quite sad. I quite like them. I quite like talking about the guys out on low because they kind of get forgotten about. But anyway, guys, that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Drop a like on the video. If you did, hit me in the comment section your thoughts and feelings about the lads out on loan, about that Matthew Craig potential move to a championship side. Let me know what you're thinking. Obviously, subscribe to the channel if you're new and hit the button notification for more. But anyway, guys, that's the video. And I'll see you all very, very soon. Take care, guys.